For the past few years, there's been a lot of discussion as to whether it makes sense for seniors housing and care companies to be publicly traded. As the few remaining public company share prices have steadily declined, the chorus against being public has grown louder. 20 years ago or so, there were about 30 publicly traded operating companies. Back then, basically in the 1990s and into the early 2000s, there were just not as many capital raising options as there are today. In fact, there were very few. And back then, most of the companies, at least on the assisted living side, were heavy into their development programs and needed equity to grow because they had to balance their capital structure somewhat, and lenders wanted to see some long-term capital in place. They then started to do a lot of off-balance sheet financing, the so-called black boxes, then the gray boxes, which got a few of them into serious trouble, even bankruptcy. Most of these companies ended up being sold or going bankrupt, but not because they were publicly traded, but because they grew too fast, couldn't manage that growth, had weak capital structures, lacked the management discipline and expertise, couldn't survive the normal economic and industry cycles, and the list goes on. The biggest problem that the naysayers have is that this is not an industry that does well having to report constant growth in revenues and income quarter to quarter. Well, let me tell you, that is not easy for a lot of industries. Yes, you will say, but our growth is laden with a lot of upfront development costs that do not yield any cash flow for a few years. Well, have you ever thought about store openings or factory openings or jet manufacturing and the costs that go into them? In addition, with all the real estate, there are a lot of non-cash charges like depreciation that make it difficult to produce a gap profit. That is one reason why years ago the sector started reporting funds from operations per share to show the results without the influence of a highly levered capital structure. When any industry is in a bit of a downturn, no one wants to report quarterly earnings because the growth just isn't there, at least for some companies. Back 20 years ago, several companies paid way too much for acquisitions of portfolios or smaller companies to show Wall Street earnings growth. And they were always highly leveraged acquisitions. For many of them, that was their undoing. But it was not because they were public, it was a result of how they chose to manage their growth and how they chose to produce earnings growth, as irresponsible as it may have been. One reason to be public is to raise equity capital. But most companies do not continually go back to the market other than REITs, banks, or utility companies, where that is very common. One former CEO always said being public was helpful even if you didn't tap the equity markets for several years. Employees could see how the company was doing. Not such a great reason these days. You could compensate them with stock and options. Well, that hasn't worked well lately. And the investment community acted as sort of a watchdog to keep management honest. While I understand this last one, isn't that really the board's job? They are being paid handsomely, so they should pressure management into doing the right things. I remember years ago when Pierre Bora, founder and CEO of Arbor Healthcare, went on the board of the former healthcare REIT, now Welltower. Friends of mine inside the REIT said that when they went in front of the board presenting acquisitions for approval, he was tough as nails asking questions and drilling down like no other board member who mostly rubber stamped the deals. He was a conservative CEO and asked the same questions he would ask his staff who wanted to risk his company's capital on acquisitions or developments. While it didn't make him popular with the staff, he was certainly respected. And at the REIT, they absolutely did a lot more homework to be ready for his questions. Too bad he was not on Brookdale's board four years ago. My guess is that he would have blocked the emeritus acquisition and may have been the sole director to do so. There are a few publicly traded companies today that seem to be able to report quarterly earnings growth, even in these difficult times, but not necessarily every quarter. But their growth is tempered, and more importantly, their capital structures are reasonably conservative with a mix of debt and leases with REITs, and they produce gap profits. They are the Ensign Group and National Healthcare Corporation, and both have a heavy mix of skilled nursing assets.
They are not, however, doing a lot of new development. I would suggest that the naysayers look into these companies and see what they're doing differently. See if their models can be copied. Then maybe ask them why they are public, what benefits they are reaping, and how difficult it is to report quarterly earnings. Being public is definitely out of favor now because census has been declining and costs are rising faster than rates. But the pendulum may swing back at some time. And when the boomers start to turn 80 and 85, even public equity investors may get back on the bandwagon. You never know.